Hi, I'm Dave Forsyth and welcome to episode 7 of our video podcast series, Avid Tips and Techniques. A couple of weeks ago, one of my ex-students had a great idea for a podcast subject, so I thought we'd tackle it in this episode. But to properly illustrate it, we need to go on a little excursion. Come on. Okay, so here we are. Now this is a really busy intersection in the morning and there's a movement among the local residents to get the traffic lights changed. To support their case, they've decided to make a video. Now the producer has decided that he doesn't want to identify any specific local businesses, so the sign here at the local service station has to get blurred out. But when a bus cuts across the frame, the blur affects it too. Not such a good look. So what we need is a way to isolate the bus from the blur for the time that it crosses the sign, and that's not as hard as it might sound. To do this, I need to create a second shape. This second shape needs to be just a little bit bigger than the blur effect to erase it while the bus passes through. Now to minimize the render time, I have split the total effect into three sections. This middle section covers the time where the bus crosses the blur, so it is only in this section that I will have that second shape. Now the main reason for this is, the more objects you have in an effect, the longer the effect will take to render. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that new shape. To do that, I'll go to the effect editor, grab the rectangle tool, and then draw my shape just a little bit larger than the original blur shape. Now you can see that by default it is a solid red rectangle. So with the new shape selected, I'm going to change it into an erase shape by coming back to the effect editor and choosing erase from the mode menu. This then erases any other shapes underneath and you can see now how the blurring has disappeared. So now we have an erase shape which can take the blur away. To track the bus, we need to animate this shape. So at the first keyframe, I'll select it, and I'm going to drag the shape over here to the very front of the bus. I'll now jog forward to the point where the bus completely covers the blur, add another keyframe at this point, and drag the erase shape across, again so it tracks the front of the bus like this. Now it's worthwhile just popping back to the very very first frame here and just jogging through frame by frame just to make sure that the shape is accurately tracking the front of the bus and that is very very close. I'm quite happy with that for now. Now the bus covers the sign for a while so I need to go forward to the point where the bus begins to reveal the sign again. So I need to find that very first frame where the back of the bus just comes back across the sign and that's going to be that frame just there. So I need to add another keyframe at that point to describe the next move. Bring my shape across so it tracks the back of the bus. Now I need to jog forward to the point where the bus completely reveals the sign and that's going to be that frame there. So I'll select that keyframe and drag this shape across. So again, it's left hand edges at the back of the bus and it completely then reveals that sign. And once more, it's worthwhile just jogging through just to make sure that it's all tracking the way it should be, and that's actually pretty good. Now you should also check the entire effect frame by frame to make sure that your foreground shapes are tracking the background correctly. Remember Dave's U-Butte ABC method of digital nonlinear editing. Always be checking. Now just to help things blend a little bit better, I'm going to add some horizontal feathering to the edge of the erase shape. I don't need to use vertical feathering because it's only ever the vertical edges that I see. Now when I do this, I must make sure that I've selected all of my keyframes in the effect, otherwise the degree of feathering will change from keyframe to keyframe. So I'll select uh, maybe the last keyframe and shift select the first keyframe and you could use control A. Uh, to select all the keyframes and that'll be fine too. Now I go to the effect editor, open up the feathering pane and just go to horizontal feathering and maybe an amount of about four should, uh, should help it just blur that edge just nicely so it composites a bit more smoothly. 
So all I need to do now is render the effect. Hit my render button, choose an effect drive, and that's the E drive, that's fine. And I'll hit OK. And the effect will render. And so the final effect looks like this. What you've seen in this video is covered in more detail in the MC305 Advanced Media Composer Effects course. You can get more information about this course and our other course offerings at our website www.avap.com.au If you have any questions or comments about this podcast, please drop me a line at dforsyth at ambertech.com.au Not a bad effect, is it? And a big thanks to Karen for the idea. Until next time, I'm Dave Forsyth. Cheers for now.